Okay, so I figured I'd make this video simply because I couldn't actually find any information about doing this. What we're going to do is detail the easy way, quote unquote easy, to get the uh, end cap off of a set me seed buffer assembly. So here's your buffer assembly. Getting the stock off is usually pretty easy. You just take the screw off, take the stock off, and then you've got your buffer assembly. If you do want to replace your buffer, sometimes they're a little worn out. You're not supposed to be able to move this in with your thumb at all. And this one is actually pretty good but I can push it in just slightly with my thumb by hand. So this one doesn't warrant replacing, but you know if yours does, if you're able to push this button in by hand, essentially at all, you should consider replacing your buffer because it will reduce wear and tear on your gun. So I couldn't find any information online about how this is actually done, but after studying this part, plus I've got a couple extra, so I don't really mind you know, butchering them on accident in, in the process of discovering, I found out a pretty easy way to do this. So the first thing that you want to start with is inspect your buffer and look all around the, the rim here for anywhere where it looks like it's staked on. You can see in these two places, mine was staked. I took a two millimeter drill bit and just lightly drilled on those two stake marks. It's really just a stake that you know, breaks the line between the buffer body and this threaded end cap. If there are, is one of those, you should just kiss it with a drill bit because if those two things are staked, it'll make turning, loosening the cap hard. But if you break that, stake with a drill bit, it should be able to spin a little easier. Just one minor thing to start with there. But the big tricky thing is, you know, spinning this cap off. So your cap, if you just take it out of a fresh gun, won't have a slot this wide. It'll have a slot that's probably about four millimeters wide. And if you take a four millimeter piece of bar stock and try and spin it, this cap will be too tight and you'll just twist your bar stock. I have a piece of four millimeter bar stock that's got like this going on. It goes, eh, and it used to be straight. And as much as I was, you know, prying and yanking on it and bending this steel bar stock, it didn't move the cap at all. So the, the solution, the way I found around this, and this also works for, you know, like if you use a four millimeter piece of bar stock and you bugger up this cap, the, the solution that I found is if you just put this thing in a mill, and this isn't ideal work holding, I just got a pair of parallels underneath it, and then you can cinch it up tight in a vise. And what I did is I took a quarter inch end mill, lined up the quarter inch end mill, center in the slot, just ran it back and forth, step down, ran it back and forth, step down, ran it back and forth until it was to the depth of the original slot. So the reason that I did quarter inch is it's a little bit thicker than what was there before, and you can get quarter inch key stock fairly readily available, and I believe this is a two foot section of key stock. Yeah, it looks like about two feet. So a two foot section of quarter inch thick by about half inch high key stock is perfect, because after you mill that quarter inch slot, this key stock will sit down in there. And now you have, you know, because it's key stock, it's good hard stuff. You have a really easy tool that you can break that loose with. And because those, you know, because we're not drilling these stakes all the way out, because we don't want to drill too far, this, this uh, cap will still be tight as you screw it out. But, you know, breaking it loose is the hard part. And if you've got a quarter inch slot in there, it just becomes so much easier than I probably spent two, three hours messing around with the uh, four millimeter version of this same basic setup. But once you make that slot a quarter inch, this gets a whole lot easier. You may just be able to buy four millimeter key stock. I don't even know if that actually exists and I wouldn't really hold my breath on it working well. Just given how soft this cap is, it really helps to have a little bit wider slot going on there. Yep, and because of those, you know, those two stakes on there, this continues to be tight enough that you have to use a tool, essentially, until it's all the way removed. There we go. So there's your end cap. Just because, again, there aren't great pictures of these parts online, I will give the camera sort of a look here. There's the cap. The stock screw threads into the middle boss there. That's all that it's got going on. That's the cap part. Loosen our vise here. Here's the body. This button you can push and that'll get all of the uh, rubber parts of the buffer to come out. There was a washer there I just dropped. Let me pick that up. This washer goes on the button here, or on the cap rather. 
That's where that washer goes. Then you have one buffer like this. And note that the buffers have a female and a male side. That just helps them stack up correctly. And there's the remainder of our parts. You have another one of these hourglass style buffers. Then just a flat coin buffer. That's the way these stack up here. And then you finally have your button. Your button is keyed here on the top. As in this mount, of course, is correspondingly keyed, so that there's an up and down. And this is, of course, up. Part would not go in like this, it goes in like this. And that's just useful for the purpose of reassembly. You drop it in there, and whatever your new buffer is. I'm going to be replacing this with the, uh, the blackjack buffer because it's $10, one part polyurethane, which is a lot better than this being a product of the 50s. I'm sure this is some extreme nonsense, no good, not chemically resistant rubber. So looking forward to replacing that with a polyurethane one. Like I'd said, this buffer is actually pretty good, but I've seen uh, pictures of buffers, not, not in the context of removing them, but pictures of buffers that are not in great shape, and they'll be all like crumbly and cracked and crusty and no good. So that's pretty much all there is to replacing this buffer. If you have a hard time getting your cap off like I did, buzz it with a quarter inch end mill, use some quarter inch bar stock, it'll come clear off. And I hope that's been helpful especially for people who are like me, who are wondering how exactly this is done, but you are at a loss like I was for actual video tutorials on it. Have a good day.